All right, well, I'm gonna tackle some Mal Minute Vine. Uh, this is in my own personal woods. I've been in here um, spraying this vine now for a couple years. I had some pear trees planted in here and just got a little bit too aggressive with my spraying for the Mal Minute Vine. It killed some of my trees, unfortunately. Um, we'll take a look at the one here. Still got a little bit of life to it. But anyway, um, I'll show you this vine and I brought some Roundup and we're going to hose it down. Here we got an empty cage. It used to have a beautiful pear tree in it. Grew there for a number of years. And yeah, back there in the background, besides the screaming jay, I got a tree tube that the bears and coyotes yank down and they drag it around, they chew on it. So you can also see Mal Minute back there. We'll get a little closer look. And there's Mal Minute climbing around on the ground. That there's triangle shaped leaves. And the vine itself is real prickly. And it's designed that way to get a hold of stuff. There you can see a mat, landscaper's mat, and a stake for a tree tube. I'm hosing this stuff down, um, try and film and spray at the same time. You got a bunch of stilt grass in there. Nothing good is really growing in there. Um, I'm just going to cover this area with Roundup. Um, keep hitting this mile a minute every year and, you know, eventually, uh, if I can keep it from going to seed. Uh, I think it was last year, the year before, I didn't hit it in time and it had went to seed so now I actually it was a couple years ago now I'm paying for it now it's a bigger patch but I have hopes of getting ahead of it yet you can see there just a big patch of pretty much bare dirt um, there's no mal minute there last year would have sprayed that pretty good um, sweep over here you got a whole mess of it growing in there so there's progress um, I'm gonna try and douse all that. Ideally be to, yeah, keep checking up on this stuff, making sure I got it all killed this year. Let's see if we can get ahead of this stuff in a few years. In this tube um, here, I got what I believe is a persimmon tree. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I think so. It would be one lone tree. Um, it was something I bought at a nursery, and you never know if they're going to be male or female trees. So, um, maybe you can't really tell what's that, but it's that little tree there coming up from the top of the tube. And, yeah, it's it's really growing well. Um, so, I'll try and get another, get a couple candy persimmons in here this fall or next spring and uh, see if I can get them to grow. That there is a wee little Mal Minute vine coming up there from where I sprayed last year. So, we're gonna kill it this year again and see if we can get ahead of this stuff. Got another great big patch of Mal Minute growing in there. It's just sickening to see this stuff. Um, there's not much else in there besides a mile a minute and stilt grass. And I know it's because I'm spraying it every, not every summer, but almost. But I want rid of this stuff. Well, this is my lone surviving pear tree. And I was just in here spraying away and I probably got some spray on it, but it is just struggling, it's all bent over, it's crooked, and that's because the mile minute was just wrapped itself the whole way up to the top of the tree. And it just did that this year, so I don't have my gloves. I was thinking all my trees were dead. Um, but at any rate, yeah, I pulled it off. Um, you can maybe see the barbs, maybe not. I don't know if this thing will focus or I can even hold still enough, but not really. Um, but there's little barbs on those vines, and they just grab a hold and dig and climb. 
Well, here's my, what I call my special locust tree. I left it here, um, kind of just into my food plot a little bit. Right next to the box blind here. Um, and it is all bent over from the wind. I was gonna go ahead and um, start a scrape here. It's July 13th, I think. So Friday the 13th, lucky day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to push on that tree. It's all flimsy, but uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it was growing too fast, too much sunlight, and the roots weren't um, going deep enough to hold it. But either way, I'm um, gonna see if I can straighten it up and get a scrape started here. I don't know that it proves anything. One of the things I always do when I'm making scrapes is I wear gloves, and it seems stupid because I'm wearing Crocs. I'm not trying to be scent free. Um, it's obvious to the deer I'm gonna be here. But I'm going to push on this tree, try to straighten it, and get a mock scrape started here. If you ever tried to straighten a locust tree, you know what I would just uh, tried to do. But don't even try it. Don't even think about it. Um, in any ways, if I climb that tree and try to bend it the other way. So I had this rope tied on the other side of the tree and I had a branch over there yet last year. Um, the deer kind of you know beat the branch up and stuff. So I'm going to tie the rope up here on the piece of the tree that's hanging down and then put a, some power scrape on it and we will shall see. Got all these branches in here. The bucks should have fun playing here. Ropes way up there. I don't know, this tree's on its last legs, but why I wear gloves beats me. Um, somebody said to do it and I always do it. My luck, a bear will attack it and destroy the tree in its entirety. But uh, I don't know. This stuff works at all. Tinks, scrape starter. Um, we'll see. It's worked for me in the past. Whether it had anything to do with the stuff I wasted money on, I don't know. I'm somebody that loves to start scrapes. Um, you can you know work them up early in areas that you know the deer hit pretty much every year or you can start them where you want them see if they take them over if they do uh, you're golden um, this spot you know it's kind of manicured if you will 
for the bucks to scrape. Um, this tree was just a little sapling five, six years ago. I left it grow for that very reason. And, you know, it's been successful. I mean, how can the deer, how can the bucks refuse to scrape under one little tree in this little food plot? So there you got my tree. Um, now that it's bent over, like, uh, like it's 90 or 300, um, you got branches, you know, two and a half feet off the ground. But I tied my rope back here, and I would estimate it to be six foot, maybe a little bit more. Um, and I doused the end there with the tanks. Scrape starter, whether that has anything to do with it or not. Um, but yeah, I usually, I won't do it quite yet, but a little later, in another month or so, I'll paw up the ground, um, scratch it up, and then always urinate in it um, there again you got a variety of opinions on that but that works for me just pan around here if you've watched my videos you've watched some of my sons killing bucks here um, I don't know what the size of this food plot is quarter acre at most but anyway um, it works and I got clover in here now um, I don't know, towards mid-July, I'll top seed cereal grains into here, try and get it good and green, fertilize it, and see if we can pull in some bucks this fall. So I just did my mock scrape starter um, down there, and I got clover in here. Um, I'll probably spray it with slay and the rest, um, kill the broad leaves, sand the grasses out. Before I uh, go in here and, and just top seed it before good rain with cereal grain, whether it's rye or triticale. Um, but I had pl also planted some Dunstan chestnut trees here that were growing and I just didn't keep after them. But up here there was a chestnut and the top of the tree here is completely dead. Um, we got a little stem. There's a little bit of life down there near the base, so I don't know what will happen here. But it's all shaded out. We got a locust tree growing beside it. Um, it's just thick with vegetation in there. But I planted three of them, and I think one out of the three is doing good. Um, I got one up in here, and there's a bunch of briars, berries around it, which that's not a bad thing. Um, the worst thing you can have is trees that are shading it out, and this chestnut is not being shaded out by trees. There is a locust growing towards it. Um, you can see it there, just a little tree. You can still see my chestnut towering up above that locust. So ideally is to cut the little locust tree um, before it gets big and and leans against the chestnut. In a few years it'll be heavier and it'll push it over. But one out of three um, is not that good compared to other places, but it's yeah, 33% successful. Um, it's better than zero. Overall, this is a good spot. Uh, it's a nice food plot tucked up in the mountain, and um, I am, you know, just quite frankly, you know, we've had a lot of good hunts here, but I'm not real pleased overall. I think we should be doing better. Um, you know, last year, you know, I had a, a really nice buck in the area, and I never got a daylight picture of him here. Uh, when he was three, I got him here quite often. I actually passed him up the last Friday of gun season the year before. And um, last year he was, score-wise, probably 140 or better as a mainframe eight. Um, he was clean, no kickers. But his G2s um, were anywhere from you know, a minimum of 12 to 15, 16 inches. And he had big threes that were 10 to 12. Um, just a really good deer, probably five or six inch G1s, 
nice frame and uh, you know unfortunately we just never got a, a chance and I feel like I should have um, so there's some things I need to do differently obviously to get the deer to utilize this food plot better one thing I think is fertilizing um, I got a little bit lazy I didn't do any fertilizing last year and I plan to do that this year and maybe um, this winter late winter spring I'll go up on the hill here and do a bunch of hinge cutting, try to thicken it up. We shall see as time allows. Um, but you can always, you know, make your hunting spots better. And you can definitely make them worse by overhunting and by doing nothing to try to get the deer in front of you. But you got to try. Um, you know, success can happen by pure luck. But the people that are out there filling their tags each and every year with big bucks, there's a reason for that. And they're putting in the effort, they're putting in the work. Um, and yeah, there's dumb luck that does come into play, maybe more often than not. At the end of the day, it's always luck to, to get a big buck. Um, but you got to try and stack the odds in your favor as best you can and have fun doing so. It's not always about killing the biggest buck. Of course, that's always fun. It's fun to see good deer, big antlers. Um, but then again, you know, the end of a successful year is a freezer full of meat. And, you know, my family relies on that um, even more so in the future. And, you know, just try to have fun, enjoy it, and give it your best shot.